Welcome to this six minute video on pelvic binders. Now, when we're talking about applying a pelvic binder, we have already gone through our scene assessment and part of the cause, we recognise that there was significant mechanism, either a crush injury, patient had fallen, um, the environments that they're in may have caused it. When we decide to apply the pelvic binder, it is really crucial we get it in the right place. And the point we actually want to place the uh, pelvic binder is directly over the greater trochanter. So we're going to have a look now at where exactly that is. So when we look at this pelvis area, we've got the iliac crest at the top here. Uh, the whole bone is the pelvis and lots of people consider uh, the top bit for binding. That's not what we want to do. Actually, this pubis bone here and this pubis symphysis down in the middle, that is the bit we want to hold together. So that's the important bit. So the greater trochanter is actually across this section here. So when we apply our pelvic binder, this is the area that we're holding together. So let's have a closer look on my skeleton here. Um, so today we're looking at the Prometheus uh, pelvic binder, which is uh, just one of many pelvic binders which is available. And on this pelvic binder it works with Velcro. Uh, there's different ways of applying this pelvic binder and the manufacturer does recommend a rolling technique to get the pelvic binder on. Um, but I'm going to consider not rolling the patient at all if we can help it. So what we can use is the natural hollows underneath the knees to apply the pelvic binder. We can then slide that up as best we can, getting it underneath the patient. But you can see we've got restriction before it needs uh, to where it needs to be. Um, they do talk about being able to roll the patient maybe 10, 15 degrees, and if you're also putting them onto a scoop stretcher, it's well worth considering doing both at the same time. If not, you might be able to use a vertical lift as a team, and you only need to lift about a centimeter to slide that pelvic binder up. And what we're aiming to do is get the middle of the pelvic binder in line with that greater trochanter area there. We're then gonna bring the pelvic binder around and this particular make is designed to be cut to size. So it is one size fits all. But what we can do for training purposes is fold it in so you can see uh, where I'm going with this. And once this is folded in, but I say be cut for real, um, we want to have a gap over that pubis symphysis area and we're going to pull this in tight. This is where the velcro comes in. So with these velcro straps we can see quite clearly um, on these triangular pieces here that it places this centrally over that greater trochanter. So that's where it's got to be. We actually want that point on there. So on the outside of this and it will just velcro on it goes in place and I'll do the same the other side so both go together so again exactly on that spot we're then going to get this black bit in the middle so over that pubis symphysis area we're going to take up the tension but the blue will not velcro to itself so once you've got the correct tension you're then going to come offset to lay the blue straps down and allow it to velcro onto the uh, green material now there are a number of ways that we can improvise a pelvic binder which we're going to have a look at now. 
So to use an improvised pelvic binder, you may have um, items like this that you can use, which will come around in the same area of Velcro and you've got that elasticity. Or you could make a pelvic binder out of something like this, which is the foam colored aluminium. Again, you get it in the right place. It comes over the greater trochanter. And on this occasion, I'm using my arterial tourniquet to hold it in place. So on the patient, trying to be down to bare skin, that get held in place. I've then got the windless bar there to wind that up and pull that in to get the correct tension onto that area. So key facts about using a pelvic binder. First of all, we've uh, identified mechanism during our scene assessment. We've then, on our patient assessment, we've actually found that there is major organ perfusion problems. So they're going to be going into hypophalemic shock. we we'll talk about that in a different video. When we choose to use a pelvic binder, we're going to use it over the greater decanter and we're going to try not to move the patient, ideally down to skin level if we can. Let's go and look at that practically in the next video.